TFL EV is brought to you by Flow Charger, maker of reliable, high quality charging stations for your electric vehicle. My friend, we're living in a world that's going through a major shift and electric muscle cars are gonna be incredibly awesome. No, you're wrong. What? Let me explain, okay? Right. Listen, hear me out. Okay. Okay, Dodge has just dropped a concept car. They call the Charger SRT Daytona concept. It shows the future for the brand for Dodge. And it's electrified. We know electric motors produce incredible horsepower and torque from zero RPM. It's all wheel drive. It has a transmission with multiple speeds and it has sound. What, oh. else, what else do you want? What else do you want in a future muscle car? Okay, here we go. So here's the bottom line. First of all, I think the car looks great and it's kind of an interesting car. That's great. And it's going to be fast. That's awesome. Muscle car. You use the word muscle car. Yes. That's what, what that? I say. That, that's a hiss and a no. Bad, Andre. Bad. It is an awesome car. It's a fast car. It's a cool car. It's not a muscle car. Muscle car, V8. Have you ever heard of a muscle car that doesn't have a gas engine? No, because it doesn't exist. Why? Because it's not supposed to exist. Muscle car is not a term you use for anything other than something that has an internal combustion engine. And I guarantee you that a lot of people out there believe that. Also, yeah. in the next few sentences, I'm going to interrupt you more than once. Okay. Can I speak now? Yes. Yes. So you mentioned, but you have to you, consider you, the you fact. You mentioned muscle. Yes. You mentioned muscle. Muscle can come in many forms. You see these guns right here? Yeah. Um, small muscle, but still, uh, muscle. It can be electrified muscle. It could be hydrogen muscle. It could be gasoline or diesel muscle. Yeah. No, no, internal combustion muscle is different than electric muscle. I agree with you that electricity makes things usually more powerful and a lot more torquey. I mean, we know that. We, we, we've tested enough electric cars. Okay. We know that. However, there is a major difference between muscle car which requires fire inside, explosions, things moving around, carburetor, intake, something like that, exhaust going to the back. And the only thing you've mentioned so far mm -hmm. that makes me think, mm, okay, maybe, is the exhaust part. So explain okay. that. Okay, I'll explain it. Uh, I think. Oh, you... this is my last time interrupting you. What? Okay, go ahead. That was the last. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay, let me explain. So. Tim Kunisk is the CEO of Dodge, yeah. um, has been a huge fan, as you know, of Hellcat-powered machinery. Oh, yeah. I think he put a Hellcat almost into anything he possibly With the exception could of like a minivan. I think yes. he's managed to put it in everything. Yeah, yeah. almost. So, so that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But uh, to me, uh, that, that concept of the muscle car, and I think Tim, this is where Tim is going, is it has to have several elements to it. It has to, obviously, horsepower and torque. Right. Okay, I, that's no argument. But it also has to satisfy other senses, right? Right. Which is why they have developed a system that they call Fredzonic sound. Do you so know what? that's after the Fredzog uh, <laughs> triangle, and they're calling it Fredzonic? Y yes. Oh, okay. It's, right. it's a interesting name. That's not the name I would have come up with. But back in the 60s and the early 70s, they had this uh, triple-pointed star. You could see it in the front of this car. Right. That was called the Fredzog. Um, that was a made-up term made by a designer. Uh, now, fast forward 50 five years or whatever, 50 years. Now um, they have a chambered system that moves air, amplifies the sound that an electric car could or should have, and makes it up to 126 decibels. Okay, that's really loud. I yes. mean, that is louder than me. 100, 126 decibels. Well, actually, you could probably challenge that. But, <laughs> but 126 decibels, according to Dodge, is the same sound level as a kind of a Hellcat V8 at full boil, so accelerating. A wide open throttle. Yes. So let's talk about the sound uh, for a minute. Is it a over oversized gazoo? You know what a gazoo it, is, right? Where you blow into it and you go, wah, 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 you know, that type yeah, of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that basically what we're talking about here? Because it sounds like they're putting air through something to make this sound, and it corresponds with the throttle position and some other things that are going on. That totally makes sense, but... Is that what we're talking about? And if that's the case, does it cool anything? Does it help performance in any way? 
What else does it do? It makes sound. <laughs> it makes sound. Okay. It makes sound. Okay. So, so, uh, but they're addressing that because other manufacturers, let's name them, mm -hmm. you know, Tesla, Ford, VW, Kia, Hyundai, Chevrolet. They, 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 Chevrolet now is coming out with yeah. a Blazer Electric. Which actually looks pretty cool too. I um, so all these manufacturers, of course, consider this, right? Mm -hmm. But their take on it is, okay, let's give people power and all-wheel drive. And the sound is just gentle, maybe a hum at the most, you know, for safety. Right. But how safe is this? This is the safest electric car in the world because 126 decibels, you will hear it coming. Okay. So I, I have to reserve my judgment on that one until I see it and hear it in person. Because okay. you, you, I've been told by you and by mm -hmm. others yeah. that when you're in the room, and you were there at when they dropped the uh, fabric on this thing. Yes. When you're in the room, you can really feel it. You kind of feel it in your chest and everything else. It actually has the air a real, is moving. Yeah, air is moving. Yes. So there's something real that's going on. And I don't necessarily hate that. I am concerned, though, that some other people might not like the fact that what you're doing is you're taking it a step above um, artificial noise. You're creating noise that doesn't really do anything in terms of enhancing performance, but perhaps you could say, but it's enhancing the driving character of the vehicle. Maybe. Okay, okay. Let's move on to another element of this car, right. which is a transmission. It's a multi-speed. How many that, speeds? Uh, we, we, don't, we don't know. Uh, so it could be a two-speed transmission. Maybe. Because they say multi, so more Mul than one. Multi. Yeah. Okay. So other manufacturers have tr done some of this, like Porsche, for example. With yeah, the, that's right. With a, a Taycan uh, electric car. Uh, they have a multi-speed transmission for various reasons, acceleration, uh, and then also efficiency. Mm -hmm. So um, this car, and by the way, we don't know a lot of numbers about this car. Uh, this concept, uh, yeah. this is this is still the Charger Daytona SRT concept. Right. Uh, but uh, that feeling, you know, banging your own gears, you know, shifting, asking for another gear to come in, they want to reproduce it in this car, and they're doing it. So do you think it's going to be something like they're going to cut power for like a split second, making it feel like you've gone to another gear and then reapply the power? Or is it something like there's actually going to be a transmission that will interrupt the flow of power to feed to a next gear and then reapply the power? Well, they're calling it the electromechanical multi-speed transmission. Oh. They're calling it Erupt because <laughs> Dodge Dodge has marketing names that are they, awesome. I, okay, I can't even argue with that. Erupt. Erupt is, <laughs> that's awesome. I'm sure no, Eddie Van e. Halen would be three. Okay, e Erupt. No, I get yes. it, I get it. Okay. So, so it's interrupting so, with an E, Erupt. I get it. I, <laughs> yeah, even, so, even me. So, my so we haven't driven this car, no. right? We don't know exactly how it feels. Uh, you haven't listened to it. You haven't heard it in person. But mm. still, I'm just saying, uh, the future is bright because this car just flips it on its head. It has a wing in the front. Uh, it still has Dodge typical kind of, you know, upright, squared off stance. But it's still aerodynamically efficient. Right. And it's all-wheel drive. And it's a hatchback. And it's a hatchback, so it can hold a lot. And the seats fold flat, at least in the concept. Are you offended by that, that it's a muscle car with no, a hatchback? No, no, no. No, actually not at all. Okay. Uh, because, I mean, I, the Dodge Durango SRT is technically a hatchback, if you want to look at it that way. And I love that. All right. So let me be completely honest with you. We do these things in order to get you guys to engage in the conversation. I do not hate this vehicle. Really, the only thing I dislike is the fact that they call it a muscle car. Anything else would have been fine. They could call it a muscle missile. <laughs> uh, or anything else along those lines, and I would have been fine with it. Now, they do have the Banshee moniker, and the Banshee thing is very interesting because that's actually uh, representative of their new powertrain that will be in other vehicles as well. Just like uh, the Hellcat powertrain is available in a variety of different vehicles, so is this one in upcoming vehicles. I like that. There, there's a symbol right there. I know. It's I, a screaming face. I can see it from my peripheral vision. I'm not good. Okay. No, and it's I mean, the wheels are ridiculously good looking. And interior. I mean, if anything, yeah, Stellantis and Dodge and Ram and Jeep. Oh, they know how to do they, it. They know how to do interiors. Yeah, show them the interior. Um, uh, so uh, the interior of this vehicle, uh, and he wasn't allowed to go in it, but he was allowed to press his nose up against the glass. And I think he got some <laughs> fingerprints actually on the glass as actually, well. Well, the doors were open. Don't so you. I was able to stick my head inside of the vehicle, but I couldn't sit down. <laughs> Could you imagine if you did? When Andre went to this event, he was actually sitting front row right there near the center. Yes. And uh, for those of us who were able to watch during the unveiling, which was all on video for everybody else, we could actually see the back of his perfectly shaved head. 
So it was pretty damn awesome. Well, I wasn't shaved. I was groomed. Very groomed. I'm not used to saying groomed. I'm used to saying shaved because I'm, yeah. Anyway, so this is the interior. And the interior of this vehicle is unique. At the same time, it does hark to what current SRT slash Dodge products look like on the interior, but in a more pronounced way. Yeah, and it's, a, once again, a concept, mm -hmm. but I think it points to the direction of their design. Once again, the detail in person is amazing. There's a floating console in the front, in, in the center of the car, and that goes to the rear of the car as well. There's a what's something they called like a pistol grip shifter inspired transmission shifter, and it's proper. It's in the center. At dude. least it's a shifter and not a button. I'll yeah, it's not that. a knob. You have to twist yes, on, the, on a steering column or something like that. They have huge screens. The gauge cluster screen in front of the steering wheel right. is 16 inches in diagonal. That's it's big. the largest uh, you know, of all clusters currently available. It, does it have a heads-up display? Yes, okay. also. Um, yes, I know the Tesla has a bigger screen in the center, but I mean behind the steering wheel, it's the largest cluster available. Um, and it's a real steering wheel, not a yoke. It's a real steering wheel, and you know, uh, Dodge designers do a great job exterior and interior. I think. Yeah, they they make it, they can make a really pretty car. And, and also, they were really, really um, this is important. They were made sure this is a driver focused area. Mm -hmm. All the screens are angled towards the driver. You're kind of sinking into the vehicle. Right. You're part of it. Obviously, you can shift, or you can you don't have to shift if you don't want to. Um, and then also. Uh, multiple power levels, multiple modes. So what do muscle cars do? They go to drag strips and they race other people. Yes. So so it has launch mode, it has drag strip mode, sport mode, all, all different modes, and nine power levels. Nine. So nine. Nine power levels in this car or nine well, power levels okay. available it's, in the future? It's, it's a little bit more complicated, of okay. course. So at, at first, there will be three power levels. And mm -hmm. the idea is you buy the car, the vehicle, right. whatever the uh, underlying hardware is, in this case, 800-volt system. Uh -huh. We don't know the battery size or range yet. And horsepower, we don't know. But if you're buying that car, you'll have certain power levels. Some of them will be kind of available to you. But if you want to upgrade later, for example, you want to go faster, um, you can use your direct uh, connection dealership. You can talk to them, and they can say, if you want to step up to the next Banshee level, you might need to upgrade your brakes or your suspension also because you're going to be going at light speed at that So, point. in other words, you can pull in to your local dealership, and they can plug you in for a yeah. upgrade. Yeah. It's like getting a boost of nitrous. Okay. Right. Think of it. Think of it. Okay. Having a big Hemi and have a couple couple of bottles of nitrous yeah. uh, in the Bro, back. Oh, I need I need more NOS. Yes. Yeah, like that. So okay, like right. that, and it has a, a power boost feature, a power shot, which is kind of <laughs> gives you a quick burst of extra energy yeah, because like you can do that. I right? love that name. That it's a uh, name. Power shot. Yeah. <laughs> so so see see what I'm saying? They're trying to replicate every element that was there before, but this is a new interpretation of it for the next muscle car. And I think all of that is great. Everything you said except for one part. Mm. Muscle car. Everything mm. else I love. I love this car. The design is fantastic. The idea of it being super fast, super comfortable, super capable, and utilitarian. Are you kidding me? That's awesome. And honestly, I really am looking for someone who can really beat the crap out of Tesla. Only because I think Tesla's lost a lot of their magic and they're kind of boring now. This is exciting. However, you're wrong because... It's not a muscle car. It's a super EV. Please uh, resolve this argument in the comments below. Help us out. Is this really the future of muscle or is it something else entirely? Oh, one thing we should mention is that, remember, this is a concept vehicle. We do have some information about possible production, though. Yeah, 2024, this car should be live. Should be. Production. Mm -hmm. That's what they said. Right. Will it look identical to this? Maybe not. Mm -hmm. There may be some changes to it. Right. Uh, how much will it cost? We don't know. Will there be a base version of this car? Probably. Yeah. Maybe later. Yep. So to come. There you are. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Thank you.